Hi there, Keith here with another Bachelor at Blog. Now when we last spoke, we had met Britt and we had met Caitlin, and we had to figure out which one of these ladies was going to be the Bachelorette. The votes were tabulated and the show wasted no time. As Chris Harrison pulled Britt aside and said, Britt, I've got some bad news. The votes have been counted and you are not the Bachelorette. Now everything that Chris Harrison does is overly dramatic. And he kind of reminded me of that kid in grade school, or I guess it's to say in high school, you know when you're in biology class, the kid who got a little too much pleasure out of like dissecting animals, because he breaks this woman's heart with the news that she's not going to be the bachelorette, and then he just slowly watches her. Not comforting her really, but just slowly watching her. I think I even saw a little smile in the corner of his eye before he discarded her like last night's trash and said, you need to go. Then he goes to Caitlin. And he says, Caitlin, I've got some bad news for you. The guys have voted and we had to send Brett home. Exactly how is that bad news for Caitlin? That's great news. It's like everything this guy does is dramatic. I could just see him at Thanksgiving dinner. I've got some bad news. Your hunger is over. We're about to eat. It's a little too much. So it was very interesting for me watching a lot of these gentlemen who had said, I want Brit to be the Bachelorette, I'm there for Brit, only to find out that Brit wasn't going to be the Bachelorette and it was going to be Caitlyn. Ooh, did they, turn, did they turn and start singing a new song? Oh, Caitlyn, I'm so glad it's you, I'm so excited. Anyways, a couple of things that stood out to me in this episode. I think my favorite person in this episode was the guy that stood up in the middle of the rose ceremony and said, I need to talk to you. His name is Brady. Not to be confused with the Brady you're hearing a lot about in the news lately, because this Brady on The Bachelorette actually doesn't have deflated balls, because it took a big pair to come up and say, hey, listen, you know what, you're super nice and all, but my heart's with Brit and I want to go and track her down. I thought that was fantastic, and hopefully things will work out for the two of them. There are a lot of guys who are left standing who actually wanted to be with Brit, but you know what? Their, their, their uh, desire to be on TV overcame them and they decided to stay. I can't see a situation where I've got somebody that I'm really crushing on and I've got somebody else and then the person I'm really crushing on gets sent away and then I settle for the second person. That's kind of like going to a nightclub and seeing a girl who, or a guy or whoever who captures your eye and then you go and you want to talk to them but by circumstances beyond your control, you're not able to or it doesn't work out and then you find some random person and you're like, okay, I guess you'll do because that's pretty much what we saw tonight. Now, of course, you know this being the first episode, we jumped ahead to scenes that are coming up in this season. And of course, the big scene that we see is that is that uh, Caitlin has sex with one of these gentlemen. Well, a couple of things. First of all, I think by the time they get to the fantasy suite, that's going to happen anyways. But the other thing is, is that there's been episodes on the ba of, on previous seasons of The Bachelor where a guy will have sex with one of the girls, and it's not really a big thing. So I don't necessarily why it's a big thing now. And I don't really think, it, I don't really care who she has sex with. I'm more interested in the little subplots that go along, along that, that happen along the way. Do you care if she's having sex with some guy before she gets to the fantasy suite? I don't know, I don't, but maybe somebody else does. What do you guys think of tonight's episode? Did you enjoy it? Do you like the choice? Are you happy with the fact that Caitlyn's going to be the Bachelorette? I mean, I like her. I mean, she's from she's from Vancouver, so she seems pretty cool. But I don't know. She seems to be jumping into the lip locking pretty quickly. It's like, don't even worry about buying me dinner. Let's just hit it now. So, I mean, all right. You're ob obviously pretty friendly and outgoing. So if that's working for you, maybe she's just celebrating the fact that she's the Bachelorette. She just wanted to celebrate with kisses. I tend to celebrate with hugs, but we're all different. So tell me, what do you think of this episode? Are you excited about this season? Are you excited about her as the Bachelorette? I can't compare her to Jillian Harrison, who was the last Vancouverite who was a Bachelorette. I think Jillian Harrison is kind of like, you know, up here, and I don't know enough about, uh, about enough about Caitlyn to say where I'd, where, I'd, uh, where I'd put her in the echelon of Bachelorettes of past. But to me, Jillian Harrison will always be the top. Or Jillian Harris or Harrison? Probably Jillian Harris. Let's move on. Anyways... Tell me what you think. CFL underscore fan on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Witty Whittier, Witty Whittier .com. Looking forward to seeing what happens next week. Oh, and one other thing. Did you notice that when we're going through the scenes coming up from this season, what was missing on all of these dates? Black guys. How come she's not going on on any dates with any of the brothers? Does that mean they're all gone by next week? Please, bachelor people, I'm, I'm begging you. Have a black bachelor. Have a black bachelorette. There's a black president. Would it be that hard to have a black bachelor? Anyways, just my two cents. 
Thank you so much for checking out this blog. Can't wait to see what happens next week, and I'll talk to you soon.